Here are 10 of the strangest customs of ancient Egypt. Number 10. Beautiful Women When a man passed in Egypt, he was embalmed right away. Of course, as long as he was rich and powerful enough to be even considered mummifying. Women, though, were a different matter. By law, the beautiful and powerful weren't sent to embalmers for at least three or four days. This was because Egyptians didn't trust the embalmers to, um, let's just say, stay professional during their duties. What? This wasn't just paranoia. It was something that the Egyptians learned the hard way. An embalmer left in charge of mummifying a royal body was caught red-handed by a co-worker. The co-worker ratted him out, and the Egyptians learned from their mistakes. So, to make sure the bodies would stay intact, they were left out for a few days first, before making it to the embalmers. Interesting, but why not just send a servant to watch over the process? Number 9. Laxatives for Everyone Laxatives were very popular in ancient Egypt. Most Egyptians would take laxatives three days each month, just for the sake of keeping diseases away and maintaining a slim figure. Even Herodotus himself wrote that Egyptians loved their, let's put it this way, detox customs. Ancient Egyptians used a laxative made with castor oil. Actually, there wasn't a problem that they couldn't fix with laxatives. Apparently, the idea was to get the disease out of their bodies by force and get through the whole mess as quickly as possible. Like we do today, ancient Egyptians had doctors for every body part of the body. They had dentists for their teeth, optometrists for their eyes, and of course, yeah, their own version of proctologists. The Egyptians were extremely proud of their, uh, emptying methods. They even had a whole myth behind them. They believed the god of Toth developed their methods and passed it on to them. Number 8. Painted Nothing Like Me Most drawings of pharaohs show them as thin, muscular people, but that actually couldn't be further from the truth. The pharaohs ordered their artists to make them look good, but the actual bodies found tell a different story. Most members of Egyptian royalty were massively overweight. The food for royalty in ancient Egypt was more likely to guarantee an early grave rather than immortality. The evidence comes from inscriptions on temple walls and from x-rays of the priests' mummified remains. The evidence shows signs of damaged arteries and heart disease. Out of 16 priest mummies whose hearts or arteries could be identified, 9 suffered from vascular calcification. Fresh translations of hieroglyphics revealed massive meals of beef, wild fowl, bread, fruit, vegetables, cake, wine, and beer were given up to the gods three times a day before being taken home and eaten by royal family members or priests. They ate a type of bread fortified with fat, while cakes were typically made with animal fat or oil. One thing we do know, the nobility loved to eat. Number 7. Burial Rituals Ancient Egyptians believed the burial process to be an important part of sending people to a comfortable afterlife. They believed that the deceased could still have such feelings of anger or hold a grudge for the living if not cared properly. That's why they had an elaborate set of burial customs that they believed were crucial to ensure immortality and a good afterlife. Wealthier Egyptians began to bury their loved ones in stone tombs and use mummification as a way to preserve the bodies. Pyramids were reserved for the pharaohs. The best mummification technique took 70 days and involved preserving the body in a mixture of salt called natron. Richer Egyptians were buried with large quantities of luxury items, but all burials, no matter the social status, included goods for the deceased. Funerary texts were often included in the grave, and so were the Shakti statues that were believed to perform manual labor for pharaohs in the afterlife. After the burial, living relatives or servants were expected to occasionally bring food to the tomb and recite prayers on behalf of those in the afterlife. In return, the people in the afterlife were expected to support and help their living family. Number 6. Royal Marriages The ancient Egyptian royal families were almost always expected to marry within the family. Sound like fun yet? Pharaohs were not only wed to their brothers and sisters, but there were also double niece marriages, where a man married a girl whose parents were his own brother and sister. It's believed that the pharaohs did this because the ancient belief that the god Osiris married his sister Isis to keep their bloodline pure. Of course, we all know now the importance of genetic diversity. 
All this led to physical deformities, genetic disorders, and many stillbirths. King Tut was the son of a brother-sister pairing. King Tut was a pharaoh who came to power at the age of 9, but only ruled for 10 years before passing at the age of 19, around 1324 BC. DNA tests that identified King Tut's family showed that he had a number of illnesses and disorders, including a deformed foot caused by a degenerative bone disease that forced him to walk with a cane. King Tut also had a cleft palate and a curved spine. He was probably weakened by inflammation and had problems with his immune system. The pure bloodline trend continued into King Tut's reign as his own wife was his half-sister. They had two daughters, but both of them were stillborns. King Tut didn't produce a live successor and was the last of his dynasty. Number 5. Pillows Ancient Egyptians used pillows made from what would be considered today very unusual materials, such as wood, ivory, or even stone. However, it's worth noting that these pillows were actually more like headrests and were usually placed under the heads of dead people. That's because ancient Egyptians considered the head to hold the essence of life. These pillows were intended to support the head and thus uphold body vigor and keep the blood circulating. They were also believed to keep demons away. This is why they were usually decorated with images of gods. Stone pillows for living people also existed and were used for a specific reason. Sleeping on or close to the ground meant that all kinds of bugs, pests, and vermin have a short trip from the ground to your face. A rocky pillow might help keep a centipede out of your nose or other insects from your ears, eyes, and mouth. But, uh, couldn't a soft pillow have done the same thing? Number 4. Daily Temple Ritual The daily ritual in the temples revolved around the statue of a certain god. The creator of the first idols was thought to be the god Ptah, the creator of man. Different temples were built for different gods, and each temple housed a particular god in the form of an enshrined statue that had gone through an opening of the mouth ritual to make sure the god can eat the food offered to him or her. A small army of holy men tended to the god's every whim, with daily offerings across Egypt's many temples. The priests also sang hymns and even washed and clothed the gods. All statues of the gods were dressed in changeable clothing and adornments, because of course, you don't wear the same clothes every day, especially if you're a god. Ceremonies ranged in complexity. At Karnak, the daily procedure to venerate king god Amun-Ra consisted of more than 60 points of focus, including the application of oils, incense, and eye paint. There was also a yoga-like set of poses and strict guidelines for anointing the god statue with kisses. Yeah, I'd say these god statues had it good. Number 3. Part of the Crew Did you know that builders in ancient Egypt used to mark the buildings they've worked on? In 2011, a robot explorer revealed ancient markings inside a secret chamber at Egypt's Great Pyramid of Giza. The markings, which no one had noticed for 4,500 years, were captured on film using a bendy camera small enough to fit through a hole in a stone door at the end of a narrow tunnel. The markings take the form of hieroglyphic symbols in red paint, but there are also visible lines in the stone carved by the builders. A Harvard professor remarked that the markings were similar to ones found all across Egypt, and graffiti like that usually marked the work gang that built the room. In some cases, markings like that give a date, and sometimes they give guidelines to mark cuttings or directional symbols about the beginning or end of a block. These graffiti markings often show up in places that were never meant to be found, such as foundations exposed when archaeologists dig below floor level. Number 2. Just Shave It Most people shaved their heads in ancient Egypt. We know this from pictures and from records written by people in other countries who looked at Egypt's fashion choices and wondered why ancient Egyptians thought going bald was such a good look. Today, though, historians are pretty sure they know why. Lice were everywhere in ancient Egypt. Even the tombs of Egyptian rulers were infested with lice, apparently flooding out from the remains of the bodies. The ancient Egyptians had lice remedies, but they either didn't work or weren't worth the hassle. Most people got so fed up with the nationwide infestation that both men and women just shaved every hair off their bodies. Women usually wore wigs, and once it's infested, they just throw it out. Well, that's definitely an easy solution. Number 1. Childbirth in ancient Egyptian society, childbirth was considered a very magical and religious moment of life. 
I mean, just think about the number of kids not making it at birth, when in labor, women would squat over the so-called abitus birth bricks. As with other material items, birth bricks most likely were different in different households. Richer people had better quality and artistically designed birth bricks, as it was believed that nicer bricks meant a better chance of having healthy kids. As everything else in ancient Egypt, the bricks had paintings on them. And the most interesting piece of these bricks is the hair color used to show the human mother and assistants. Hair color was traditionally painted as black, but these women were shown with sky blue hair color. The symbolism of this blue color shows that these women were given a divine form. Children were considered a blessing in ancient Egypt, no matter their sex. The Greeks, who were accustomed to leaving unwanted or weak babies exposed to the elements, were stunned to observe that every baby born to Egyptian families were cared for and raised. Here's what's next. 